2025 was supposed to be an explosive year for SpaceX's Starship program, but we just do not expect it to be this literal. Since the debut of the Block 2 version, the rocket has suffered a series of high-profile failures. So what's going on? Why does SpaceX's Starship keep exploding? Technically speaking, most of the explosions are actually intentional. By federal law, all space rockets must be equipped with a flight termination system, FTS, in case something goes seriously wrong. In other words, if you're going to launch a rocket into space, you have to strap explosives to it. And honestly, it is a very smart rule. Rocket flight paths are designed to go over the ocean so that if something fails, debris won't land in populated areas. But if a rocket veers off course while its engines are still firing, it could potentially hurl itself toward land, possibly even into a city. That would be catastrophic. The FTS exists to prevent that. It detonates the rocket mid-flight before it can pose a threat. And in doing so, it also burns off much of the toxic liquid fuel before it can reach the ground. So, when you see one of those spectacular starship debris trails lighting up the sky, it is usually not an accident. Something did go wrong, but in a way that left the rocket intact and flying unpredictably. At that point, the FTS is triggered to destroy the vehicle and ensure the wreckage falls safely into the ocean. But Starship is not blowing up for fun. It only self-destructs when something has already gone wrong. Across Starship's nine test flights, a wide variety of failures have occurred. On its very first launch, the rocket unexpectedly kicked up a massive cloud of debris, a sort of rock tornado that contributed to it spinning out of control. SpaceX managed to solve many of the early issues with Block 1 and saw a good deal of success. But after transitioning to Block 2, things began to get bad again. The company has struggled to replicate its earlier achievements with Starship. During test flights in January and March, the rockets lost control just minutes after liftoff, scattering debris into the ocean and, in at least one case, onto a car in the Turks and Caicos Islands. SpaceX engineers determined that the January failure was likely caused by extreme vibrations that led to fuel leaks and fires in the engine compartment. These vibrations may have matched the vehicle's natural resonant frequency, amplifying the shaking far beyond what had been anticipated and causing a premature engine shutdown. The March test ended in a similar way, but this time, investigators traced the failure to a hardware issue in one of the engines, a different root cause from the January flight. In SpaceX's Starship test last month, the rocket successfully completed its ascent phase, appearing to overcome the problems that had plagued earlier attempts. However, shortly after the Raptor engines shut down, a fuel leak caused the ship to tumble uncontrollably in space. As a result, it was unable to execute a guided re-entry, which was necessary to test a new generation of heat shield materials. And most recently, a Starship prototype exploded before it even had the chance to leave the ground. The vehicle involved was Ship 36, which was being prepared for what would have been the 10th Starship test flight. The explosion occurred as SpaceX was finishing the loading of super-cold methane and liquid oxygen propellants in preparation for a static fire test. According to the company, the area around the test site was evacuated beforehand and all personnel were safe and accounted for after the incident. Early findings point to a failure in a nitrogen composite overwrapped pressure vessel, COPFV, which appears to have failed below its proof pressure and under conditions that should not have damaged the tank. Elon Musk responded to the incident on social media, noting, If further investigation confirms that this is what happened, it is the first time ever for this design. Many observers believe that design changes introduced in Block 2 are a major reason for Starship's recent failures. The new version of Starship is slightly taller than the vehicles SpaceX flew in 2023 and 2024. It features an upgraded heat shield designed to better withstand the intense heat of atmospheric re-entry. To support longer missions, SpaceX sacrificed some payload volume in order to boost the fuel tank capacity by 25%. One of the most significant engineering updates is the new fuel feed system. 
Instead of a single downcomer routing methane fuel to the ship's three vacuum-optimized Raptor engines, RVACX, Block 2 uses four separate lines, three dedicated methane feed lines, one for each RVAC and a fourth for other systems. This allows for more precise control of pressure and fuel flow to each engine individually. While this precision can improve efficiency and engine management, it also removes the multi-engine dampening effect seen in earlier designs. That change may come with unintended side effects. Longer and more isolated feed lines can increase the risk of pogo oscillations, a type of self-excited vibration that has historically plagued liquid-fueled rockets. By isolating each engine on its own dedicated line, SpaceX may have unintentionally created conditions where pogo behavior, previously dampened by the shared system, can now develop and intensify. Another theory is that in optimizing Starship for Block 2, SpaceX may have removed or lightened some structural elements to reduce mass. The first generation of Starship was not built for maximum payload capacity. Its primary goal was to reach orbit and return safely. It was heavier than ideal, used earlier versions of the Raptor engines, and was not optimized for efficiency. In fact, it ended up being heavier than originally expected. Block 1 was essentially a testbed, a version built to prove that Starship could fly and potentially be reused. Now, with Block 2, SpaceX is aiming to get much closer to the ambitious payload performance the company envisions for future missions. That leads to an important question. How do you scale up the vehicle, increase fuel capacity, and improve efficiency while still relying on the same six engines? One possibility is that SpaceX is being forced to trim every possible ounce of excess weight, pushing the engines closer to their operational limits during launch. The downside is that this makes the rocket more fragile and more vulnerable to engine overheating, structural stress, and vibration a combination that can easily lead to failure. Whether all of these setbacks count as failures depends on your perspective. This is engineering, where broken prototypes are often a necessary step on the path to a reliable design. What makes SpaceX's approach seem unusual to many is that it breaks from the traditional model of rocket development. Historically, space agencies like NASA and legacy aerospace companies such as United Launch Alliance ULA, have moved slowly and cautiously. They typically hold off on live testing until they are confident the rocket will perform as expected. That remains true today, as seen with NASA's Space Launch System SLS, which has been in development for over a decade. Traditional programs are designed to avoid public failure. Their mindset is to take as much time as needed to ensure success. SpaceX, on the other hand, follows a very different philosophy. The company embraces a fast-paced, iterative process that learns from failure. This approach has played a major role in its rapid progress, allowing it to achieve milestones like the reusable Falcon 9 in a fraction of the time it has taken others. However, the downside is that this method results in frequent and very public failures, sometimes drawing criticism especially around environmental impacts near the launch site. And even by SpaceX's own move, fast, and break things standards, Starship's development has appeared especially chaotic. The path to Falcon 9 reusability, for example, was incremental. SpaceX first focused on proving the rocket's basic performance, and only years later did it begin experimenting with recovering and reusing boosters. With Starship, SpaceX is attempting to solve nearly every challenge at once. It is developing a brand new rocket with new engines and trying to make it fully reusable from the beginning. That is an extraordinarily difficult engineering problem. The Raptor engines that power Starship are a major part of that challenge. Each vehicle uses 33 of them, tightly packed and firing together, which creates a host of technical hurdles related to vibration, synchronization, and thermal management. So why is SpaceX pushing so hard and so fast? The answer lies in Elon Musk's long-term vision. He is laser-focused on getting to Mars. While it is theoretically possible to attempt a Mars mission using existing rockets like the Falcon 9, the sheer volume of equipment 
cargo and crew required makes that approach inefficient and extremely expensive. To make Mars missions even remotely feasible, both financially and logistically, you need to be able to move a massive payload in a single launch. When SpaceX CEO Elon Musk addressed employees at the company's South Texas facility in late May, he reignited enthusiasm for his long-standing ambition to send humans to Mars. He laid out a bold, though uncertain, timeline. The next optimal launch window to Mars opens in late 2026, when the interplanetary travel time shortens from over a year to roughly six to nine months. Musk said SpaceX aims to take advantage of that window by sending up to five uncrewed Starship vehicles, each packed with cargo, to the Red Planet. But he was also candid about the odds, suggesting there's only a 50-50 chance that even one Starship will reach Mars in 2026. Recent challenges may have pushed those odds even lower. Before that window arrives, SpaceX plans to debut a significantly upgraded version of its launch system called Starship Block 3. This version of the two-stage system, which includes the Starship upper stage and Super Heavy Booster, will be larger and more powerful. Expanded propellant tanks and improved Raptor engines could increase its payload capacity to as much as 200 metric tons. These upgrades are intended to overcome the engineering hurdles currently hindering progress. The Block 3 system is expected to address and key technical limitations of the current Starship iteration. Engineers are racing to resolve a host of problems, including engine reliability, structural vibrations, a fragile payload bay door, and the resilience of the ship's heat shield. Some see the shift to Block 3 as a fresh start. However, even a flawless suborbital test flight along the same trajectory used in previous missions will not be enough to prove readiness for Mars. One of the biggest challenges remains refueling in orbit. Despite Starship's larger fuel capacity, a trip to Mars requires even more propellant than the vehicle can carry at launch. To solve this, SpaceX plans to launch a series of tanker Starships filled with fuel and oxidizer. These tankers would dock with the Mars-bound Starship in low Earth orbit, topping it off before the long journey begins. However, in-space fuel transfer, especially between large spacecraft, has never been attempted. Another monumental hurdle is atmospheric re-entry on Mars. The Martian atmosphere, composed almost entirely of carbon dioxide, poses a unique and dangerous problem. As Starship slams into the thin air at interplanetary speeds, it compresses the gas in front of it, generating extreme temperatures. This process breaks down CO2 into carbon and oxygen. The released oxygen, in turn, could start to oxidize, or essentially burn, the spacecraft's heat shield. Musk called this one of the toughest problems SpaceX must overcome. No one has ever developed a truly reusable orbital heat shield, Musk said in May. That is extremely difficult to do. 